Hey guys, Mrs. Talk Techie here, and I'm so happy that you decided to join me on today's tech tutorial. It is called Mystery Time Reveal, but it's not about a tutorial on how to teach kids how to tell time. It's this neat little trick that I've been seeing all around different uh, tech groups and social media, and I really liked it, and I said, you know what? How does that work? I wanted to figure it out, and so, um, I looked and researched and I found different people that had already, uh, you know, been our trailblazers. So kudos to them and thank you giving them credit for that. But uh, check it out if you don't know what I'm talking about. This is the whole purpose of today's tutorial. How can we make this happen right here? I have a slide presentation that I've created on telling time. And so what we have here is a magnifying glass and our kiddos can try and practice telling time and then check their answers by sliding this magnifying glass over the little uh, text box there. And what do you know? You get the answer. It reveals itself through the magnifying glass. And really all it is, it's uh, playing with the layers that uh, we have in Google Slides. So if you're interested on how to do this, I'm gonna do that first, guys. I'm gonna show you how it works, and then I'm gonna show you how you can use this and create a full lesson cycle in uh, Google Slides for our kiddos during this time of remote learning. Now, don't get discouraged and don't think that, well, this is all on telling time. You can adapt this and make it fit the needs of your content and your instruction. It's just how innovative can you get with it. So uh, let's get started on how it works. Alrighty guys, it's actually really simple. All you need is three layers, all right? So three elements. In this case, our bottom layer is gonna be this shape that I've created here. You can easily use the slide background and I'll show you how to do that at the end. Um, but in this case, I'm using this shape that I just created. That's gonna be your bottom layer. Then your middle layer is actually going to be the magnifying glass that I grabbed from the images from Google. The only thing is you want to make sure that your magnifying glass, the glass part right here, is not transparent. You want it to have a color to it to be able to create that effect. And how do you know? If I hover over this, I'm actually covering those, those uh, letters. That's how you know that this is not transparent. The rest is, but not the actual glass part. And lastly, so you need your, your background, your magnifying glass, and then your text is gonna sit on top of that. And one last thing to make the whole effect work is the text needs to be the same color as your bottom layer. In this case, it's gonna be this blue color. That's what my text is gonna be in a bit. Some quick uh, tips and tricks to help us with this. When you're creating these mystery effects, uh, one of the shortcuts that I like to use is control shift down arrow or control shift up arrow. That's gonna help us uh, just become more efficient when it comes to layering our elements here. You can easily, if you're not too you know, proficient in that or you don't like to use that, you can easily right click, order, and then you can bring those uh, forward or back. And it's all about that, guys. It's just about the layering, all right? So let's make it happen. The first thing is I want to. I have my shape here, and I want to just make sure it's on the, the furthest bottom layer. So I'm going to click on Control-Shift-Down. Then I'm going to bring over my text, and I'm going to make my text the same color as my shape. So I'm going to go over here and I use one that we have by default. I didn't get a custom color. So just by default, notice it's already the same shape. So when I click outside of it, it's mysteriously gone, right? Now I'm going to grab this and I'm going to see if it's in the middle layer by hovering over and there it is. It actually is already there. I didn't have to mess with it. And you have it in the mid middle layer and it's revealed. So what happens if that's not the case and you have something like this. Well, then you have to mess with the layers. So I'm gonna make sure that this is forward and I'm gonna try and grab my text and bring that forward 
and there you go until you see it look like this. So what if you're using your slides background and not a shape? And this is what I mean. I'm going to get rid of this shape. And now I have this. Well, we want this text to be the same color as our background. So I'm going to go straight over here and I'm going to find that color. And most of the time, if you download your presentations, for example, I got mine from slidesgo.com. Uh, they'll add those colors that come with that presentation right here. That's my theme right here. So I can easily go to it and there you go. Now I have it. And if I do this, if I remove, if I move over the magnifying glass, it's disappeared. So just keep that in mind, guys. Those are just little tips and tricks. If you grab your presentation template from uh, Slides Mania, Slides Go, Slides Carnival, there's a lot of them out there. Most of the time, if not all of the time, you'll be able to get those theme colors right here so that they can easily match. Alrighty, so what we're doing next is I'm gonna show you how we can use our Google Slides presentation to create an entire lesson cycle. Our, all our instruction all in one from our initial teach to our guided practice, to our independent practice, to our correctives, maintenance, everything you need in one lesson can be done in a Google Slides presentation. So the first thing I would do is my best shot, my initial teach. And because I'm not there in the classroom, we are teaching remotely, this is how I would provide it. I would give a video, all right, a YouTube video. It might even be me actually teaching this video, but if you can't do a video yourself, then you can easily find one on YouTube. And so I would put that in there and make sure that our kids watch it as well. After that, now it's time for our guided practice. And so most of the time you do these things together and you practice together so that you know that there are going to be, there's going to be those things that are going to trip up your kids no matter what. There's those mistakes that always happen and you know they're going to happen. So you want to be prepared, but we're not there live to be able to catch those mistakes to provide those correctives. We don't want to wait till after we give the whole lesson and they turn it into us and then try to give correctives. We want to be able to be proactive in that sense. And this is how we can do it. If you go to my next slide here, this is how I would do it. I give them a practice one, one that I know that they're going to trip up on because it, they always do. And you know that they're going to do that. So you want to be able to be there and give that, that corrective to them. So let's pretend this is one of them. And instead of, uh, instead of six o'clock, they think this is 12 o'clock. Here's my practice slide. They're going to grab the magnifying glass. They're going to hover over it. And in their head, they think it's uh, 12 o'clock, but in reality it's six, but they don't know why. This is just an example, guys. You can use any content, any instruction, whatever you want to use, you can put here as your sample right? And here are the instructions for the kids on what to do. So they see that they got it wrong. They're going to follow this path to this video that I've already uh, provided for them here. I already know why they got this one wrong, right? Because historically speaking, when it comes to this content, this is why they, they the kids get this one wrong. So then here, the video is going to tell them, hey, you got this one wrong, probably because of this. Don't forget that this needs to happen or whatever it may be. Think about how many uh, correctives you're already giving our kiddos without even, you know, turning the information back into them and stuff like that. It's about trying to be as proactive as possible. So I would give the kids a couple of these. If they get it right, all right, they go to the correct high five and they move on to the next one. I would give them a couple of these, like I mentioned. Then let's do some independent practice. And here I would have the kiddos put what they think, uh, answer these uh, on their own. So if they think this one is 130, they would type in 130. All I did, guys, is grab a worksheet from online and cropped it and put it on here and then added text boxes. So you'll see how I did that in a bit on the next one. So once they answer all these, now I want them to check their, their answers. So they're going to go to the next one and they're going to say, oh yes, I did 
click, I did uh, type in 130, so I did get that one right. And then maybe provide another video on, hey guys, here are some things. If you got this one wrong, you probably were thinking whatever, right? And you let them know. And finally, you check for understanding and you give them their, their uh, little quiz, their exit ticket. And all I did here is I went to Google, I looked for a worksheet, I saved this worksheet as an image on my desktop. I went back to my presentation and I added it to the background. I'm right clicking, change background, choose image, and then I'm gonna browse for it. And it's on my desktop, here it is. And then I just open it and it adds there. Now to make it digital, digitize it, I added text boxes. And I put the color and the text and all that just to make it easy for our kiddos. And so then our kids just fill that out. And then once they're done, I have instructions to say, hey, submit this back to me on Google Classroom or whatever LMS that you're using. And uh, all I'm gonna check is this part right here. But I've already done some of the legwork of providing that feedback, that immediate feedback that our kids need that when it comes to remote learning, it's tough because we're not right there hovering over watching them, you know, but we do know what are some of, some of the mistakes that are going to be made so we can try and be proactive about it. And that mystery reveal effect can totally help us out when it comes to that, guys. I hope you guys like that. Let me know what you think. Um, please give me a thumbs up, guys. That gives me my affirmation of performance. That's what I feed off of that. Uh, of. That's what fuels me. That's what keeps me going. Comment below if there's something else you'd like to learn about or something that I didn't cover that you'd, you'd like to see how it works. Uh, also, of course, don't forget to subscribe. And right next to the subscribe button, there is a bell, guys. And if you hit on that bell, if you click on it and you basically turn it on, every time I upload new content, you'll get notified. So if you do want to see more videos, guys, click on that bell. Of course, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, I am very humbled that you, are a, you take the time to watch my stuff. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.